for the Fawcett Family Wildlife Health Center. Um, and we take in all kinds of wildlife from British Columbia. So we take out the majority of the species. We do do mammals and birds and amphibians, reptiles, all of them, but there are a few that we're limited on. We, we aren't allowed to take in absolutely everything. Uh, so yeah, we rely on the public to bring in animals. We don't actually have the um, staff or the facilities to go out and rescue animals. We rely on conservation or members of the public to bring them into us. But here we have a full hospital uh, for dealing with uh, any kind of minor injuries. Uh, so basically we triage them here, we look at the injuries, we do what we can to, uh, if we can, we can give them the time uh, and the support they need to hopefully heal. And then ultimately the goal is to release them. Uh, so yeah, this eagle was found in Salmon Arm. It had just fledged, so it had just been uh, learning to fly and went to land in a tree and impaled itself by the wing on a branch and literally was hanging by this wing from that, like from a branch about 70 feet up in a huge tree. Um, and actually was uh, rescued by a, um, some, some locals there. Um, one fellow went up the tree, he had the equipment and got it out, which was pretty, pretty amazing. And then it came in here and we did, uh, we initially did take it in, get x-rays done to make sure there was no broken bones or anything and everything looked good that way. But this uh, injury, the hole where it had impaled itself was quite large. And we did try to have it stitched up. It was stitched up and looked pretty good, but unfortunately it's all, it's, the stitch is ripped out and has, uh, she's got a little bit of an infection going in there. So we'll find out if the antibiotics that we are using are gonna work, and if not, we'll switch it to something that will give her the best chance. Uh, so right now we have some, uh, lots of birds of prey come through here. I'd say that's one of the uh, vast majority of the things that we get in here. Um, a lot of them are hit by cars. Um, Sometimes we get uh, lots of emaciated birds uh, or animals that are just aren't doing well out there for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes they're young, so we get a lot of juvenile animals or even just nestlings that have fallen out of the nests. Uh, the magic, I think 80% of the things we get in here are somehow human related. Oh yeah, so I think one of my favorite stories this year was a, a little um, great horned owl that came in and he was just a little nestling. He was about this big and just a big ball of fluff and he had fallen out of the nest obviously somewhere and was in some long grass and a fellow was weed whipping his yard and he actually weed whipped the poor little owl and felt absolutely terrible about it. Uh, luckily Vern, the little owl, was not too badly hurt. He had a small laceration which healed up quite nicely but he was still a, a little baby so we've had him here and raised him up now. Now he's a pretty much a full adult size and now the next step for us is to try and get him hunting and catching live prey so then we can release them into the wild. Here we have a giant binder that shows you all the different diets. So we start with birds and we have like most birds we've had in here we have a diet written up and then it also gives you examples of sizes and what the dish should look like. So it's pretty easy for people to follow. Next section is mammals. We have bats, bobcats, it's all alphabetical. And then uh, after that we have amphibians and reptiles. All of our food for animals. Oh, it's actually very clean, very empty right now. Lots of time to have fruits and veggies as well for different animals. Okay, so we have a couple dishes here for our eagles. These are both eagle diets, a bit of fish, a bit of red meat. Uh, the chicks and the mice will be for some of the raptors, like uh, this is probably a red-tailed hawk, vern, right here. This is for a cedar waxing we have in the back. And this here is for our geese, Canada geese. They eat better than I do. It's just hopefully I'll give him enough time and maybe he can overcome that head trauma. Well, I think a lot of times we get animals in here and they are so ill that they are just, they're not, they don't have any fight in them whatsoever. So you pick them up and they're just, they're just lying there quite lethargic. So we always get quite excited when they start trying to actually bite us or get you with their feet. So when they get mean, I get a little happier. So we rely basically on uh, the public and donations. We don't have any government grants or anything like that that we get for this um, direct, like yearly or anything like that, or nothing from the city. This is all just from what we bring in our front door to, to do this. This whole year we've been fundraising for an x-ray machines because that is the one thing that we don't have here that we really do need. So we get a lot of animals and they're extremely broken and we need to see how broken and where it's broken or sometimes there's, there's a, so many reasons why we need an x-ray machine. So like the obvious one is broken bones. 
Uh, but recently I just had a loon in that had swallowed a fish hook. So an x-ray would have been amazing because I would have been able to look and see how far down. The, I could see it went right down into the stomach. But I didn't know what was on the end of that. Was it a hook? Was it a lure? What's in that stomach? So uh, it would have been really great. But this little guy it seems like he might be. He's still kind of... It's been a bit of an uphill battle for him.